Coming up on 5-Minute News. Joe Biden holds memorial for 400,000 US COVID victims. A dozen National Guard troops pulled from inauguration duties. And federal court strikes down major Trump climate rollback. It's Wednesday, January 20. I'm Anthony Davis. President-elect Joe Biden made a sober entrance to the nation's capital on Tuesday, ready to assume power as the 46th President of the United States, as America reels from the coronavirus pandemic, soaring unemployment and the rise of fascism as he prepares to take the oath of office. Biden flew into a military airbase just outside the Capitol on Tuesday afternoon and then motorcaded into Fortress DC, a city that's been flooded by some 25,000 National Guard troops guarding a Capitol, White House and National Mall that are wrapped in a maze of barricades and tall fencing. Shortly before Biden departed for Washington, the US reached another grim milestone in the pandemic, surpassing 400,000 deaths from the virus, according to Johns Hopkins University. These are dark times, Biden told dozens of supporters in an emotional send-off in Delaware before departing for Washington. But there's always light. Outgoing President Donald Trump will not attend Biden's inauguration, the first outgoing president to skip the ceremony since Andrew Johnson more than a century and a half ago. The White House released a farewell video from Trump just as Biden landed at Joint Base Andrews. Trump, who has repeatedly and falsely claimed widespread fraud led to his election loss, extended best wishes to the incoming administration in his nearly 20-minute address, but did not utter Biden's name. Trump spent some of his last moments in the White House huddled with advisers, weighing final hour pardons and grants of clemency. Trump will depart from Washington this morning in an airbase ceremony that he helped plan himself. Biden at his Delaware farewell, held at the National Guard Reserve Center named after his late son, Beau Biden, paid tribute to his home state. I'll always be a proud son of the state of Delaware, Biden said, who struggled to hold back tears as he delivered brief remarks. After arriving in Washington, Biden went directly to an evening ceremony at the Reflecting Pool near the Lincoln Memorial to honor American lives lost to COVID-19. He was joined by Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, who spoke of the collective anguish of a nation. For many months we have grieved by ourselves, Harris said. Tonight we grieve and begin healing together. Biden followed with his own brief remarks, telling Americans that to heal we must remember, as he spoke with 400 lights representing the pandemic victims illuminated behind him. He faced the statue of Abraham Lincoln, the Civil War president who served as more than 600,000 Americans died. As he turned to walk away at the conclusion of the vigil, he faced the black granite wall listing the 58,000-plus Americans who perished in Vietnam. Inaugural organizers this week finished installing some 200,000 U.S. state and territorial flags on the National Mall, a display to represent the American people who couldn't come to the inauguration, which is restricted under the tight security and COVID-19 restrictions. It is also a reminder of all the president-elect faces as he looks to steer the nation through the pandemic, with infections and deaths soaring. Aides say Biden will use today's inaugural address to call for American unity and offer an optimistic message that Americans can get past the dark moment by working together. 
A dozen members of the US National Guard have been removed from their duties, helping to secure Joe Biden's inauguration after vetting, which included screening for potential ties to right-wing extremism. A Pentagon spokesperson said the vetting went beyond ties to extremist groups. One Guard member was removed from duty after troubling text messages, and another had been reported to a tip line the chief of the National Guard Bureau, General Daniel Hockerson, told reporters. About 25,000 Guard members have been deployed in Washington in the aftermath of the Capitol attack on January 6, in which a mob incited by Donald Trump in his attempts to overturn the election defeat rampaged through Congress, seeking lawmakers to kidnap and execute. Senior defence officials subsequently indicated concern that attacks on the inauguration might be launched from within the ranks of the Guard. A US Army official and a senior US intelligence official, speaking anonymously, said the first two Guard members removed had been found to have ties to fringe right-wing militias. No plot against Biden was found. The federal government has taken the possibility of insider threats seriously after multiple rioters who breached the US Capitol were revealed to have ties to law enforcement and the military. In the Senate, the Republican leader Mitch McConnell said the pro-Trump mob that stormed the Capitol had been fed lies by the president and others. McConnell's remarks were his most severe and public rebuke of Trump. Republican senators face a daunting choice of whether to convict Donald Trump of inciting the insurrection in the first impeachment trial of a president no longer in office. In a last-minute slap at Donald Trump, a federal appeals court struck down one of his administration's most momentous climate rollbacks on Tuesday, saying officials acted illegally in issuing a new rule that eased federal regulation of air pollution from power plants. The Trump administration rule was based on a mistaken reading of the Clean Air Act. The US Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia ruled, adding that the Environmental Protection Agency fundamentally has misconceived the law. The decision is likely to give the incoming Biden administration a freer hand to regulate emissions from power plants, one of the major sources of climate-damaging fossil fuel emissions. Environmental groups celebrated the ruling by a three-member panel of the Court of Appeals. Today's decision is the perfect Inauguration Day present for America, said Ben Levitin, a lawyer for the Environmental Defense Fund, one of the groups that had challenged the Trump rule in court. The ruling confirms that the Trump administration's dubious attempts to get rid of common-sense limits on climate pollution from power plants was illegal, Leviton said. Now we can turn to the critically important work of protecting Americans from climate change and creating new clean energy jobs. Under Trump, the EPA rolled back dozens of public health and environmental protections as the climate change sceptic administration sought to cut regulation overall, calling much of it unnecessary and a burden to business. Representative Kathy Castor, chairwoman of the House Select Committee on the Climate Crisis, called the ruling a timely rejection of Trump's effort to roll back the Obama-era clean power plan. It looks like we're kicking off a new era of clean energy progress a day early, Castor said. It's almost poetic to see our courts vacate this short-sighted and harmful policy on Trump's last full day in office. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app. Ask your smart speaker or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate, delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news. Daily.